Hello, and thank you so much for tuning in to the Prophetic Marriage Ministry. My name is Shannon, if this is your first time, and I want to welcome you to my channel. So I have a prophetic word from the Lord today, and that word is, your spouse still loves you, even through separation. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. And so I know many of you are currently in separation with your spouse. And a lot of you have just went into separation with your spouse. Or maybe you've been in separation for just a little while, or maybe it's been a couple months, or maybe it's even been years. I don't know what your particular situation is, but I know that separations are very stressful for a lot of you. Separations make you wonder if your spouse still loves you. You wonder if your spouse still thinks about you. And then you have moments where you want to give up or you have moments where you feel like you love them. And then you wonder if you still love them. And then you feel like you're over them. And then there's one day when like God just puts this love in your heart for this person and it just gets so intense and you can't shake it. And then you start to miss them. And then you start to get angry. It's like so many up and down emotions while you're in separation. And I know the main wonder and worry and concern while you're in separation is, does my spouse still love me? Are they thinking of me in the same way that I'm thinking about them? Have they even considered me during this time of separation? And I know some of you feel like, well, if they miss me, then they could have just reached out. If they wanted to see me, then they would see me. But we have to understand that there are extenuating circumstances a lot of times that causes people not to reach out. And sometimes separations are protection from the Lord. And sometimes, yes, it could be the, the enemy doing a separation spell, doing a love spell, you know, all types of witchcraft is going on nowadays. You just never know. But that's why we always get ahead of the enemy and we are always fasting as we feel led, praying for our spouses and rebuking those witches and warlocks and love spells and whatever the enemy may be trying to do. But all of us know that even though the enemy may appear to have the upper hand, he does not have the upper hand. God just allows the enemy to do some things because during those separations, God is working on your heart. God is dealing with you. You're growing. You're, you're maturing. God is preparing you to have that conversation with your spouse. God is preparing your heart to have that conversation with your spouse and also preparing your spouse, your spouse's heart to have that conversation with you. It's so many confusing feelings, confusing thoughts, but let me just send you some comfort, some peace and some hope and hopefully some joy as led by God. God has given me some things to share. So if God has given you a promise and God has told you that this man or this woman is your husband, if you're not married to them yet, or if you're already married to them and God has promised you restoration and reconciliation for your marriage, then we do not have anything to worry about even during separations, because why would we worry if God has already given you this promise? If God has already told you your husband is going to come home, if um, if God has already told you your wife is going to come home, if God has already told you if you're already living with them and you're married to them already, but there's like still a separation going on because the emotional part is not there yet. If God has told you that they will begin to fall in love with you again, and although you're living in house you know, they will come back to their, to their senses. The scales will be removed. So I know it's a challenge during separations. I know, like I said, there's lots of questions during separations, but if God already confirmed with you over and over and over and over and over that this is your person and they're going to marry you or they're going to come home or they're going to come back to their right mind, then why are we worrying in the separations? God is not a man that he should lie. I know separations are challenging and it, and it makes you doubt. And we all have had those moments where we doubt God, you know, am I really going to get married? God is my husband or is my wife really going to come home? I don't understand what's going on. I don't, I don't know. But God is not a liar. God is not a liar, regardless of the separation, regardless of how long the separation is, regardless of what you do during the separation, regardless of what your spouse is doing in, in the separation. God is not a man that he should lie. And that is not that. Okay. So whatever your, whatever your spouse is doing or whatever you're doing, that's not going to change what God has said. That's not going to change it. That's not going to change it. That's not going to change it. Now I'm not saying to disobey God and go out and date somebody else, you know, and do whatever you want to do. If God has told you not to, if God has told you to be obedient to this process, 
I'm not saying do whatever you want to do because God is going to do it anyway. Because sometimes when you step out of God's covenant and mess with a bunch of counterfeits or whatever the case is, then you got a whole lot of other stuff that you need to deal with. And now it's like, okay, now I didn't included this person in my situation and included that person. And now God got to deal with this and deal with that. You know, you don't want to make it worse on yourself. You don't want to make the, the separation even more complicated than what it is. Because at the end of the day, when your husband come back home, when your wife come back home, when your spouse is ready, you're going to kick that counterfeit to the curb. So we have to be respectful as it concerns other people's feelings i know that you know you get lonely and you want to go out and date and whatever the case is and and honestly even if you had that feeling maybe you actually went out and tried to date but it didn't feel good it didn't feel comfortable like it just felt like weird to you because like you've just been so used to this person and you've just been so committed to the process so even if you wanted to when you actually do it it ain't gonna feel right because it's outside of what God has said. It's outside of God's promises. Now, I don't know if God told any any of you to do something otherwise, you know, but I know as far as I'm concerned and as far as everybody else that I've spoken to, they said that God has instructed them to stay focused on the covenant, stay focused on the promise, even in separation, even in separation. So, you know, I don't know if anybody wanna come up against that, but the Lord says, to me and everybody else who I've spoken to so far, I haven't gotten a chance to spoke to everybody, to speak to everybody, but we are to stay committed to what God has said. Hallelujah, glory to God, thank you, Jesus. Now, God has given me a scripture as it concerns how our spouses feel during separation. Even if they may be dating someone else, you you never know what's going on on, on the other side of the story, on the other side of the situation. Some people are, like I said, they're under some type of spell or maybe they think the grass is greener on the other side and God allows them to come to the end of themselves with this other person. Or maybe it's some crazy extenuating circumstance. You know, who in the world knows? I know that it could be anything causing this separation. You know, maybe somebody might have lied to your spouse. Maybe there may be some type of different counterfeits coming from out of the woodwork and making you look a certain way or whatever the case is. Who in the world knows? But I know that even during separation, no matter what's going on, no matter how it looks, no matter what you think, God has told me that these spouses, your, your heart is still with them. Hallelujah, glory to God, thank you, Jesus. Their heart is with you. And so let me read the scripture that God has given me as this is concerned. So God has given me um, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 17. And it reads, but since we were taken away from you, believers, for a little while in person, but not in heart, we endeavored with great longing to see you face to face. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So this scripture is saying that although they were taken from you just a little while in person, not in heart. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So your spouse has your heart and you have your spouse's heart. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Even though they're not there, even though you're not talking to them, even though you don't know what's going on, even though you don't see what's happening or why it's happening, or even if you're in communication, thank you, Holy Spirit, even if you're in communication with them and you don't feel the love or you have not gotten that confession yet or that communication yet as far as moving forward in your marriage or moving forward in what God has said, even though they have not said it, Oh, trust and believe they still love you. If this is something that God has confirmed, the Holy Spirit has told you and has confirmed it, then trust and believe, although it has not been spoken yet, or even though you are in separation, your heart is with them and their heart is with you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And God took me to the scripture because he showed me, I think it was 644 and it means separate. I think it was 644, if I'm not mistaken in the strong concordance, I could be wrong. It's somewhere around there if it's not 644, but it means um, separate or to separate or something like that. And um, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and 17 drew my attention. I think that was the only scripture that was on there. If I'm remembering correctly, y'all, because there's so many numbers on the Strong's Concordance. I think that's what it was. But yes, that's what God is saying. And I was like, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. They still love you. They're still thinking about you. They may be in a situation right now where they can't fully communicate how they feel where they're still trying to decide you know how I'm going to do this how I'm going to do that God could still be working on their heart God could still be working out their circumstances God could be working on different situations concerning them and concerning you but I know that while we're in separation what we are not to do is I mean I, I know it's easier said than done but the Lord does not want us to wake up and like 
only and like the only thing that you do is think about them think about them think about them like you don't do anything else you don't work on anything else you know because that's how you get consumed with it and that's how it really drains you and so yes granted you are going to think about them because you love them you care about them and you miss them so i'm not saying like oh don't think about them at, at all i mean maybe you can do that um but that may be a little bit challenging to not think about them at all but don't let that be the only thing that you do and I don't know what you can do. Maybe you can go for a walk. Maybe you can work out, listen to some worship worship music. Maybe you can go out to eat with a friend. Maybe you can like start a hobby, like do something so that you're not solely only thinking about them and not doing anything else to help you grow. If you want to learn how to cook better, maybe you can teach yourself how to cook. Maybe you can have a girl's night or maybe you have a guy's night, you know, do something that's, um, you know, productive. Read the Bible, ask God to show you some revelation in the word of God that you've never seen before. You know, something that can help you. Maybe you could start a YouTube channel, start, you know, start a podcast, you know, do something to help someone else. And God is reminding me of this scripture that says, um, you will be refreshed when you refresh others. So that's something else that you can do during the separation is bless somebody. Bless somebody with like, I mean, it doesn't always have to be a monetary blessing, but if you can, yeah, bless somebody. If God prompts you to get somebody a couple dollars or whatever the case is, or help somebody cook, cook somebody a meal, buy somebody some food, get um some food to give some money to the homeless. You know, um, here it is. It's Proverbs chapter 11, verses 25. And it says, a generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I can honestly say this is true in my life because I have had moments when I was really down and I would have a, a coaching session and I would be so uplifted, so motivated, so blessed, so encouraged because although I was really, really down, I still took the time to refresh someone else, to bless someone else. And in that conversation, it's always revelation. It's always so much confirmation and it's always like encouraging to me. And so this verse, I truly live this verse out and I praise the Lord for that. I praise God. So if you can refresh someone else in some type of way, that will also keep you focused and keep you just, you know, on a straight and narrow so you won't only think about your spouse i ain't gonna be unrealistic and say don't think about them at all because it's kind of like you can't help but to think about them and and even ask god you know if you need some help ask god what can you do i know some people may say oh you know i don't really have any money to do anything to get my mind off him go for a walk you know maybe it's some it's a park nearby you know walk around your complex or something like that child do something find something ask god to give you an idea to try to keep you like not so 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 focused on it where that's the only thing that you're thinking about because then that's how you can slip into idolatry and that's not good either i don't want nobody to slip into idolatry because then you start to get angry and then you start to fussing and cussing and fighting and then you're trying to stab people i'm just playing <laughs> i'm just kidding it's just a joke do not stab nobody do not be violent okay do not do that i am not condoning violence at all whatsoever okay praise the lord hallelujah thank you jesus glory to god hallelujah so yes um but yes, I love y'all so much. I just wanted to let you know that your spouse still cares about you. They still think about you. They still love you. And while you're in separation, do something productive. Ask God to help you to figure out what can you do that's productive because I'm sure there's something that you can find. If you feel led to sow into this word, I will leave the information in the description and the comment section below. And if you have already sown, I want to thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. And I pray that the Lord increases your seed a thousandfold in the mighty name of Jesus. And also, if you desire a coaching session, so let's say um, you want to do uh, one hour, you want to do two hours. If you want to do 30 minutes, you can do that. Go to my website. The booking site is in the description and the comment section below. But if you can't afford the payment, then send me an email so that I can send you an invoice for afterpay. My email is prophetic marriage at gmail.com and we can break the um the appointment up into four payments and so all you have to do is pay the first payment and then we can have the session and then the remaining three payments will come out of your account every two weeks automatically but i love y'all so much i want to thank you so much for tuning in like this video if it has helped you in any way share it with a friend if you feel like it will help them subscribe if you feel led but i want to thank you so much for tuning in to the prophetic marriage ministry and i will see you again in my next video Bye bye